Hey folks, we are here at Spoonfest 2019 and uh, I'm carrying on wandering about, catching up with great craftspeople and makers and lovely people here at the festival, bringing you some more videos on some of the stuff going on and some of the great things that people are doing with their work. Um, I'm here with Paul, Paul Adamson. Oh, yep. Yep. Um, if you're one of our subscribers on the website, then you might have seen uh, our videos with Paul already, looking at cooksers and cooks are making. Yep. Um, and we're just going to do a quick little look at something else that Paul does. What are we? What are you showing me? I'm going to make these um, little scoops. Right. Uh, little birch leaf scoops, I call them. So it's um, it's like a very small eating spoon. So it's got a crank. It's quite hard to do a crank into a small item. Yeah. So the idea is that we make two at the same time out of a piece of wood. Amazing. And uh, have a bit of fun with some decoration as well. Not just uh, yeah. patterns, but shapes. Yeah, brilliant. So you probably can't see that now on camera, but these have a, do you call these birch leaf scoops? Yeah. Yeah. Little uh, leaf design on the handle that's carved to that leaf shape. And is that coal rosing? Yeah, coal rosing and yeah. a bit of chip carving maybe, yeah. or deeper lines. So you'll see that in a minute. I'll cut to a close up now. We'll let Paul show you how it's done and um, you'll be able to see that. Yep. Brilliant. Cool. So I'm going to get stuck straight into it. I've made a billet, which is basically a rectangle of wood to the length that I need, just to give me some predictability and I've drawn on the shapes that I want to make. So it's just really basic work that you always do when you're getting ready to make a spoon. You don't really need to see that, it's, it's pretty basic stuff. Um, the first thing I want to do is to put the cranks in to the bowl and I'm going to do that along this line here. You can put a saw cut in and that's one way to do it, it's really predictable, you get the material to remove but with having been able to hold it on this end of the spoon which is quite unusual, you wouldn't do that on an eating spoon, I can come in this way with the axe and it, it kind of works okay. I'll show you. I always work in strips so I always go in in threes when I do axe work. So I'm going to work down this way first, then that one, and then that one. Just a shorter width makes it a lot easier for the axe to remove the wood. I'm just going to separate the fibres until they're roughly where that line was. Obviously trying to draw my blow so, so I don't split the whole thing off. Okay, that feels about right. Just loosening the fibres. And then I'm going to come across from the side. And I'm going to stop about just past halfway, turn the workpiece around, and then come the other way. They should have a, a bit of a crank going on there now, some, some bit, bit of tidying up to do. To be honest, that's the worst of it. We can do the rest with a knife. Try and make it look pretty. So I'm just going to do the same again on the other side. So I'm just going to draw the picture back on um, to, um, well, so you can see what I'm doing basically. And uh, as ever, I'm uh, using templates, faithful piece of plastic. And these, um, these Mars Lumograph pencils are just amazing. They draw on wet wood really easily, even freshly felled willow like this. So it's just a rough guide. And I, um, I leave a gap here because we're going to saw through there. We need a bit of, bit of movement for that. Okay, 
Job done. What should we do next then? So we need to get this wood out of here now. And that's the, that's the hardest bit. It's not like an eating spoon where you've got a graduated taper going down to the bowl. You know, it's quite wide, suddenly quite narrow. Um, so one way of just getting in there a bit easier is with the, uh, the saw. And I'm um, just going to use a little, little pocket saw. Um, whenever I saw, it's always best when you're in the field to stand on a block like this. And, uh, swap sides. You can do it all with an axe, but it can get a little bit messy. And uh, you might as well make life easy for yourself if you can. So the same thing, I'm going to work in strips again, into thirds, work on these sharp corners. Yep. So I'm going to work down these seams in thirds to get that flat surface, well eventually back to a flat surface like this all the way along. You'll see as I do it anyway. So there's your two thirds, and your final one. Just comes out easier if you do that. You can use the flat of the material on the block, and just alter your position a little bit, just to flick the corner, the top corner of your axe into that little movement. Don't forget you've always got your knife anyway to finish off. I'm just removing the bulk. I'm going to extend that taper a bit anyway. I'm just going to take it more off at the back because it's coming off anyway. So this section, always a bit tricky. You can, if you feel confident, you can work up here but make sure it's a short movement. I quite like making these because they're, they're great for teaching as well because you, you're trying to do all the different things that are complicated to do in one package. Just do a bump cut. Okay, more of the same. You can, so you can use the, the flat section of the billet on the block, you're nice and supported and you can come in. One benefit of that is we've weakened this now um, and we don't want to hold it here as much as we can um, because obviously it's weak. It should be okay because it's a nice thick piece but just bear that in mind. So sometimes this, this really helps. It's quite hard to be accurate sometimes with this method but give it a go, you might learn something. Working in those strips, there's almost no force needed to, to remove that material. So even though we've weakened this, it's not, it's not the end of the world doing this kind of movement. Down the middle. And just coming round and getting into that corner. So that's the hardest bit done, really. So I'll just basically work on one piece now. And... Um, We'll forget about the other and just obviously that's repetition. The reason why we're doing two at the same time is they're very small items, they're quite hard to make. Um, there's nothing to really hold on to while you're swinging an axe about and axe of speed work up but we've got to do it safely so hold on to one while you make the other. You can put the crank in, you can put all these um, little not not notches in and um, it's just easy. Um, also just doing the back here, so quick just to hold on to this and whack away. If you're holding it there, there's a good chance you're going to have an accident. The last thing to do is just to thin down the handle. And we'll get down to a fairly finished thickness, because the top's not too bad, that's just going to take a little bit of knife work, just to smooth off the, the cuts from splitting. Down the middle again, so it's working in those thirds makes axe work so much easier. 
Right, so um, we've done the underneath of the handle. Now we've just got to do the underneath of the bowl now. And you can put a saw cut across the bottom of here and build your cuts up to it if you really want to still, um, you know, be super safe and everything. But what I normally do by now is just, just to cut, the, cut it off and separate the two. There you go. So that one we'll, we'll come back to another day. Pretend that I've already done the notches. <laughs> We're rushing ahead. Okay, so it's got this odd looking thing now to, to do something with. So if you wanted a super deep um, scoop, you've got the opportunity to uh, produce that. Um, I quite like a shallow one, a bit like a tablespoon really. Um, you can still get quite a lot on because they mound up uh, coffee grounds and, and sugar and what have you anyway. So um, often thinner than you think is, is the way to go. And it's just, uh, it's just basic stuff now. Because you've started to form that handle, it actually makes a really comfy place to, to grip the, the scoop. And um, again, I'm going to work in thirds. So I'm going to pick on this, this seam, this edge, this corner first, and then that one, then the middle one. Then I'm going to start to bring all of that round to make the, uh, the tip. And I'll just pop a little bit of a reminder of how thick I want the end. So all this is waste. I'm going to come down here first, then there, and then the middle. And you can do bump cuts, so you just line it up, get all your angles set up, and just chip away. And it's safe because you're not swinging your axe. So see if we can do one down the middle, doesn't normally work as well down that way. There we've got, we've got some of it off. Okay, so. Thickness is not too, I've got lots to play with there, so I might kind of live with that. Yep, same there, this, this thickness. So I'm just gonna bring it all round. Just turning the wood and keeping the axe going almost straight down. Just coming round to that corner again just to maintain that curve. Yeah, it's just a bit thick in the middle now. Nearly there, look. One more pass should do it. Yeah, we'll live with that for the sake of, um, you know, knife work. So it's just these two corners now. So it's just these two corners to take off now. And it's the same procedure we're gonna turn the wood and keep the axe going straight down. And I'm just using the, the very top sort of inch of the, the axe really. I don't need to do a, a big thing. It's a thin piece of willow, it's a big heavy axe. And it's more accurate just to start the, start the cut off. Oop, he says. And then you can bump that bit off and then start to do the curve. Don't worry if you don't do it first time. And you can always leave a bit extra on and take it off with the knife. Okay, that should do for that. Just tidy this um, handle section up. So I've got my eye in now, I know where Material needs to come off a bit more. And you can choose to do it all with the knife, it just saves time. Okay. So that's about it for axe work. Doesn't look pretty, but it's uh, it saved you a lot of time if you were to do that with a knife anyway. Right, okay, so um, just so that we, we all know what we're making, we've got the, the, the finished examples, if you like. Um, they're never perfect, it's just a bit of fun. Uh, you can go to town on these and spend longer than I do if you want to make them perfect. And it all started with this for me. I, I just wanted to analyse what made the shape and how to create it in wood. It's a bit like trying to draw cartoon characters. Um, my wife's amazing at doing stuff like that. She can get a person and animate her 
or him and, and turn it into a drawing quickly by concentrating on certain features and it's a bit like this going on here so if you look at the, uh, the drawing of the leaf wherever you've got a vein you've got a high spot so the first thing to do is to make those high spots and this introduces 3D shape rather than just patination actually t changing the, the handle into a shape as well as putting on the lines to make it look like a leaf. So the first thing to do is just to draw some lines. So I'm just going to gentle curve just to do the main vein going down from the, um, the petiole. Always add curves to things in nature if you can. And then everything tends to start off with a curve and go down like a gentle S shape. And as you get towards the end, they become a bit straighter. It tends to be about five on average if you look at leaves. Um, sometimes I've seen them with four on. So these are high spots. And to create those, I'm just going to thin down the handle a bit. This handle isn't finished. We're just going to try and get you going on decoration now. If you thin this down a bit, it makes it a bit easier. Okay. So high spots are made using this technique. So you can um, cut towards yourself, but with a little bit of assistance with a finger. Try and make a curve and do it for the whole side. And we'll come back in there and finish that later. Okay, you're always twisting and you tend to use the tip or somewhere near the tip. And choking up on the blade makes it a bit easier. Just be super careful. And hopefully you're seeing that shape develop. So now it's got high spots. This is always the tricky one, always wants to split off. You can try it with a thumb push in one direction and an assisted grip in the other and just wiggle away until it kind of looks leafy. You'll get there, a bit more time, I'll take that off a bit. Next section, if you look there's three little ones in between the high spots. Making three is really hard, I've tried and it just looked a mess. So what I do is I concentrate on making one by coming down from your high spot and making a little chip. And then one on the other side of the high spot. And if you do that all the way along, you tend to get one that sticks out, that's set down lower from those. And you can play around with this and make it exactly how I say, or you can just rough it up and sometimes if you just go for it quite quickly they look more natural. If you've got a wider section like that you might be able to get another another high spot. Let's, uh, let's give it a go. You can really make it a bit more random. And if you let the wood dry uh, before you do this these chips will come off a, a little bit easier and with sharper edges. It's not doing too bad just the green. That's about it for that and all we do is to make these veins stand out. You can use your knife like a pen or you can use a dedicated chip carving knife like one of these and um, you know you can soon put the pants on. Now I'd always recommend you put some material like a rolled up coat or something on your leg if you do this or we'll work at a table. But just, just basic chip carving, we're going to um, come in at, a, at an angle to the line. We're super careful about slipping. Turn it round. Angle from the other direction, basically making a V-shaped cut. That reduce, removes the chip. But please, please uh, use some material, I'm just doing this quickly. You can just about make out a, a, a V-shaped groove there. That's how you make deep, dark lines and it's called chip carving I suppose. To make the thin little lines here, what I tend to do, you can see them there, I just, I just get the tip of the knife and I just, um, imagine I've done a, a deep line here, let's just do one quickly, down to your tip. Just to the side, let's go one, two, three, four, five, six, something like that. And believe it or not, 
when you put your pigment in there, whatever your chosen colourful powder is, it will actually trap into those lines, but much better so if the wood is dry, because at the moment it'll, it'll, those sides will come back in and uh, you won't get the pigment in unless you do it straight away. But that's it in a nutshell. Rubby pigment in, I use ochre, and then I, I put oil on just before, put the ochre in, and then more oil on afterwards. And then, um, yeah, that's about it really. Bit of a burnish, this section works really well for burnishing. That seals in the pigment into the, into the thin coal rose lines, and it just softens the edges of the chip carved ones. But in a nutshell, that's how to make the virtually scoops.